you're in charge of something like this. Like you're most successful if, if you've got an optometrist who's opening up a new practice and you're mm-hmm. giving him guidance on how to manage marketing. Mm-hmm. Tell him. So, um, you know the the average the you know the practice I've worked with it's it's really been a breakdown between doctors that are super engaged, office managers that manage the, the role, and you know some kind of combination of the both. But to look at who's going to be the most successful, um, ultimately to make any initiative in a business work, it has to come from the top all the time. And so uh, one of the things, if you know, what you said is extremely on point, uh, is you know optometrists and I, I believe pretty much any you know medical professional. Yeah, that's not their expertise. They're not marketers. And so um, they need somebody to guide them internally on what's important to push within the practice, what's important to push in terms of marketing initiatives. Um, and then uh, sometimes there are things that a doctor can do to really drive incredible value. So I would say if, if a practice wants to be effective as, as much as possible, then um, budgeting time for marketing on the doctor side, even if you have an office manager or staff person managing, like let's say, more of the implementation, um, is a really important call. Um, and I would I would highly recommend that you know every doctor does that. I would say the practices that do the best are the practices where the doctor doesn't see patients all the time. Um, I my previous uh, mentor uh, in this in this company, uh, he told me that uh, the difference between a uh, $2 million practice and a $10 million practice is that the $10 million practice has a CEO at the helm and a $2 million practice has a bunch of doctors, right? Uh, you can't, you can't. <laughs> yeah. so that's, uh, I really like that. It, it resonates it. with me. I don't think that the average doctor should spend all day long doing marketing, but, um, but to be effective and, and realizing that this is their business and ultimately they need to they're going to be the one who really cares the most about ROI and growing a business, not their office manager, not a staff person. They're going to be the ones who are going to have the most impact on implementing things. Um, and, and there are things that they should be doing on a marketing side that are possibly the most important in terms of, uh, you know, maybe not most important, but what, you know, top 10 marketing initiatives for, you know, medical practice, I'd say a couple of those fall on the doctor. And so, yeah, I would say budgeting for uh, two hours a week to spend on marketing would be uh, definitely something that I would highly recommend. And if you can do more, great. And in, I highly doubt that many practices or doctors do more than two hours of marketing-related uh, activities. But uh, definitely, definitely the ultimate is to be involved. Well, I think that aligns perfectly with kind of my thought on it too, which I've always said, you know, one of the first things I would recommend optometrists do is really know the market and, you know, not just who your competitors are in the area, but research on uh, across the nation, what rates should be, what reimbursement rates should be, all of those things. Uh, And the way you do that is by networking with guys like you who already have access to all of that information. The second thing goes to working on the business, and mm-hmm. physicians are are notorious for always wanting to be in the clinic and not really working on the business. And there's a great book. I don't know if you've seen Emeth Revisited. I'm a huge fan yeah. of it. Floats around uh, communities often, but it talks all about that. It talks about how you, you you've really got to be working on the business and not in the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other part, the next part to that is knowing your numbers. I mean, I think knowing your numbers is super important. And you had talked a lot about how important data is on the marketing side uh, on the financial side, uh, do you guys dig into financials? Uh, what do you see as far as the most successful, uh, uh, the most successful financially measure the measuring stick of a finance? This dollar for dollar, what are? How do you have the most successful optometry business? <laughs> Okay, so so I think f- well, first of all, just just taking a step back on the dollar side of things, um, I think that. Oftentimes, when, when doctors think about marketing, they have a number in their head that sounds good. You know, they're comfortable with spending that amount on marketing, and that makes sense to them. And that, but that's not really the, the best way to look at it. The average optometry practice spends $5 in marketing for every new patient. Um, and so what, I think the first step, whenever you're looking at um, just the numbers and marketing and stuff like that and trying to understand, is to say, what are my growth goals? 
Um, what's the potential revenue from those growth goals? And then how much would be a reasonable amount to spend to achieve that versus saying, I think X amount of dollars per month sounds sounds comfortable for me. It doesn't mean that you have to jump into that and maybe you can make your growth goals lower or your spend per for your growth goals lower. Um, so that's just, you know, a, 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 like, and that's going to depend on the practice. I mean, I, some, some practices of mine, they, their average patient revenue is a thousand dollars. Um, and some practice their average patient revenue is $85. Um, and so part of understanding just how much money to spend and how much, um, and, and the numbers is to understand, you know, where do you have profit centers in the practice? Right, what's making you money? <laughs> where where can you have the biggest impact on that, or where do you see? And sometimes it's not even just a financial decision. Sometimes it's a decision about positioning in the market. Sometimes it's a, it's a decision about the passion within a special uh, with a specific specialty or, or or topic. You know, some doctors are really excited about boutique opticals, and some doctors are really excited about the latest contact lens uh, uh, that are available, and so. Um, but understanding kind of where you can, you know, what the revenue is, what the profit is for that patient, how, but not just looking at it in the short term, but looking at it in, in a holistic, uh, like a big picture view and saying, okay, if I get a mother in and the mother has on average two kids and an husband, she's the primary decider for her family of where they go for eye care. Um, and, uh, they're going to reschedule, you know, every year and a half and 60% of my patients continue with me for te for 15 years. So the financial picture is, is going to be based on kind of like some kind of projection that looks at the value of a new patient over a certain amount of time. And then when you want to look at is, is um, not only just the value of the new patient, but also initiatives that can increase the, the revenue of that patient. Well, that's so I, I think that's awesome. And, you know, that was originally how we got introduced is I was actually doing research on what we call the lifetime value of an optometrist mm -hmm. patient. Uh, and you, you breeze through that, but uh, take us back and kind of step through uh, kind of a procedurally how we figure out what a what is the lifetime value and why is it important? Okay. So, I mean, there, there are statistics that are industry-wide, and obviously each practice might have different statistics, but usually you can pull up data like, uh, you know, how often your patient is scheduling. Uh, you, can, you can pull up data about what the average spend of a patient is. Um, and then you can also see what the drop-off rate is. So um, once you have kind of like, a, you could either use industry averages and just assume, um, or if you have the capability to kind of pull that data from your EHR or, or from you know uh, some kind of business intelligence software that you're using or something like that, um, then you can really um, you know plan out and you might be conservative and only see you know like like you know assess the value of a patient at seven years or at ten years or 15 years if you're kind of <laughs> ambitious but ultimately um as long as the data is relatively true meaning as long as the assumptions of the percentage of people that are going to come back the assumptions of how often they're scheduling and the assumptions of the the revenue per patient it's not that difficult to make a, a pretty rough calculation of what the value is um and so uh that's kind of how i would look at it um, did that answer it or did you want yeah. to, uh, okay. uh, you know, I believe so. And, you know, uh, once you, if, if listeners have any additional questions, there's lots of information online and how to calculate it. Now, once you know the, the lifetime value, uh, how do you use that in, in making decisions? Great. Um, so if the first thing is to realize is to set yourself, um, a budget of what would be a good investment, a great ROI, what you would be thrilled at taking for a new patient, because now that's going to set a much more realistic budget for your marketing. Um, you know, if you've assessed that the lifetime value of a mother is $6,000, right? So then if I say, would you be willing to spend $200 to acquire that patient? It's a no brainer. Right. <laughs> um, so, so part of it is just kind of, it's going to help you determine what is a reasonable amount of, of, uh, of investment to try to generate. And then it also helps you put into perspective why spending time on this is important. Um, that's, um, that's one aspect of looking at, you know, that data, but another aspect is also identifying, um, 
opportunities within that number, right? So if I say, you know, I have um, 60% of my patients are coming back to my practice or one every patient, the average patient schedules every year and a half. So how can I improve that? If I can bring it down from a year and a half to a year and three months, that's going to have a massive impact over the long term. If I can bring that up from 60% to 65%, you know, a big problem or not a big problem, but kind of an area where a lot of practices rely on automated tools like patient, you know, recall um, is often just the bare minimum of what they should be doing, right? Because the financial impact of doing a better job is so huge. Um, and so once you have a good picture of the, of the value of that patient, now it puts into perspective of what would that look like if I was able to bump up, you know, improve this number by X percent? What would it look like if I was able, able to get 10 new patients a month? What would it look like if I was able to increase the revenue of a new patient by $50? Um, and so it gives you a clear indication of the value of taking on a marketing initiative that might be able to drive the revenue per patient or taking on a marketing initiative that would be able to drive new patient growth or taking on a marketing initiative to improve your recall or retention. Very good. Well, so, uh, I'm hoping our audience is following along with <laughs> how we do this. It, 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 again, if, you, if there are any questions, feel free to reach out to us or Evan uh, as we kind of break through what he's doing here because this is valuable stuff. This is procedurally how you develop a marketing plan and even how you manage it. So I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, like a lot of uh, clients I've worked with in the past, optometrists uh, always want new patients and then they get it and then they're overbooked. And I'm sure you see this where there's just no more time to see any more patients. Uh, and so they start asking questions like, are there ways that I can maximize profits and not have to see more patients? Uh, are, there, are there trends in the industry that you're seeing or do you guys have recommendations on what happens whenever you know, a book does get full? Yeah, so so there are quite a few ways of, of tackling that issue. Um, so the first way is to, um, there are a lot of higher revenue services, right? And so those provide opportunities uh, where as opposed to making, let's say, $300 on average, you're making $2,500 per patient. So, you know, creating room within your book and saying, okay, I'm going to slow down on my new patient marketing and really focus my attention on high revenue patient marketing can be one way of tackling the issue of I'm full, um, but I want to grow. Um, another thing is focusing all your attention on, on the, the, some of the ideas we just talked about a second ago, which is um, I don't necessarily need new patients, but what I do need is to find ways to increase the revenue per patient, whether it's improving um, the doctor's uh, conversation with the patient, whether it's talking about um, improving the process of how the patient experiences the practice while they're there. So just as an example, um, I had a doctor I spoke to recently, and, and she told me that uh, they opened a new location. And in the new location, they basically split the exam into two parts so that the patient would go through the um, general refraction part of the exam to check out what glasses they need. Then they would go over to the optical and then they would come back for like a little more medical testing. And the improvement uh, was in, in optical sales was, uh, it was huge because people don't want to sit there for, for an hour before they even go look shopping for glasses, right? So small little initiatives often have a massive impact on the revenue per patient. Sometimes I have practices that are um, really good at talking about a topic, right? talk about the protection of blue light protection or sunglasses you talk passionately about uh the importance of um uh you know controlling myopia progression in kids or you talk passionately about how uh you believe that uh daily disposable contact lenses are the best option for a patient um the doctor patient relationship is a very powerful sales medium which is often underutilized uh, very often underutilized, um, and so 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 that would be kind of like two two really great examples would be you know increase revenue and focus on higher revenue services for your marketing um, within optometry. There's a there are definitely trends like there's a lot of pressure from insurances um, pricing wise, and so a practice that is really full might step back from a specific insurance that doesn't really give them enough profitability. And then now they're a problem because now they need to get more new patients, but at least the new patients that they're getting are gonna be much more profitable. Um, 
that's a, a kind of another thing. And uh, let's see. Yeah, but uh, you know, that it's really just a shifting focus of your marketing efforts. But there are sure. definitely ways to grow a business outside of getting more new patients through the door. Um, sometimes I'll recommend to a practice that's so busy to actually like block off a certain part of their calendar for higher revenue um, services if they do that. Say, so, you know, even if you're not full today, that's the focus of your marketing initiatives, and you know, we need to have that availability to grow that aspect. It's going to take a little bit of time, but eventually what will happen is you're going to increase the, the average revenue of your patients by X amount. That's really impactful. No, that's great stuff. Well, uh, and I'm glad you help all segments, regardless of where an optometrist is, whether they're just starting, whether they're, you know, maybe slowly declining and want to increase or whether they're too busy. It sounds like you could help optometrists mm -hmm. regardless of where they are at so if, if we've got an audience member and i've just got two more questions for you but if you got an audience member where you think uh or they're on the other side of this saying hey he's talking directly to me this is i'm i'm, I'm in tune with this uh, i want to grow my practice uh do you have any closing words for them do you have any closing words? Oh, that's a good one all right open-ended um do I have any closing words? All right, give me give me three seconds to kind of think about this. is important. Um, <laughs> so, um, I think I think uh, my closing words are that what you're what you need to look for is is a is a marketing company that first and foremost is able to show measurable results because without being able to determine the ROI on what you're doing, it's just very hard to assess if if you're making right decisions and stuff like that. So that that would be my first, and 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 that kind of goes along with my main point which is um there are tremendous opportunities for growth and as an optometrist or as a doctor you got to outsource <laughs> you can't assume that you can do it and you can't assume that somebody your office manager is a marketing expert you really need to look for a company that you think is a is a partner um that focuses in on really creating measurable growth on the long term um and 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 then let them guide you i mean it, it's incredible how many practices come on and they start telling me how you know they want to have a twitter and instagram and pinterest and snapchat and sure everybody's on social media but uh the practice literally has you know no results and there are 20 things that they should do before starting up i'm not saying that social media is not important at all but i'm saying is that you know uh having somebody who has the experience of, of what's going to provide the most value and guiding a practice and, and and letting and letting yourself say yes this is my business and i'm passionate about it and i want it to grow but at the at the end of the day you're going to be far more effective working with somebody who who shares that passion but is actually good at marketing um so well, that's my closing statement I, I love it i love uh the conclusion because we all feel it all everybody listening knows how fragmented and how there are just so many things that we should be doing uh trying to find the, the proper path is mm -hmm. is so hard to do because we feel like we need to do all of the things uh, right. So I can't tell you how much I've appreciated you uh, being on the podcast. I'm excited to get this out uh, into the hands of the audience. And uh, Evan, if if people want to uh, contact you, uh, I Care Pro, can you can you talk about how we can find you? Yeah, the best bet is I mean you can reach me by email. It's Evan E V A N at iCarePro.net. Um, you can also call my direct uh, phone number. It's two zero one. Um, five nine one four three five zero. Um, so really happy to you know my my approach is always help first, um, and then you know find out if they're interested in in sales later. So I'm really happy to just you know anybody from who's listening, if they have questions, they have uh, you know anything they want to hash out. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm really happy to to help. Evan, man, thanks so much. Excited to have you. Looking forward to building more of a, a, a long-term relationship with you. But thanks again from me. Thanks, and RJ. I appreciate uh, being here, and uh, it, was a, it was a great time. Guys, I am pumped. Uh, I want to thank Evan for the time we've spent together. Uh, love knowing that there are specialists that speak to subset of our audience, the optometrist and ophthalmologist group. Uh, he spoke about some easy techniques, the Google reviews and how important those are, things you can get started with day one. He also talked about how awesome uh, it is to be able to make decisions with data. 
uh, which we talk about all the time. You know, the results have to speak for themselves. We are not uh, often spending money for brand and imaging. We actually need it to produce new patients. Uh, so data is super important. And then he also talked about ways that you can maximize revenue by looking at the profit centers. And I hope that was loud and clear. You know, even if you have a full book and you just think there's not another hour in my day, but we're not making enough money. He talked about the profit centers that you could look at, looking at kind of higher, lower volume, but higher uh, per case visit. And uh, uh, those were really strong words, and we see people struggle with that a lot. So uh, closing words were phenomenal. I hope you guys uh, heard that too. Uh, and feel free to get in touch with Evan. If I can answer any questions, you know I am always there. Do me a favor, and please share, rate, and write a review of the podcast. That helps get the word out for us. Use your favorite podcast uh, tool, whatever podcast listening app you use. And also send this to someone that has an optometry clinic now. Uh, we'd love to get this shared. And we'd also love to know if you know a potential speaker, someone that has helped other healthcare organizations grow. Uh, would love to speak to them, whether it's a, a vendor or someone who has actually scaled their healthcare business. Would love to talk to them about that. 